Okay, anyway. All right, hmm. Secant x over one minus cosine x is equal to one plus cosine x. First of all, there is this one minus cosine, right? So if you see this, this one, you should automatically remember that you need to multiply both sides, I mean top and bottom, by the conjugate of the bottom. And conjugate of the bottom, so conjugate of one minus cosine is one plus cosine, right? So let's multiply on the left, multiply both sides with one plus cosine, okay? So sine squared x over one minus cosine x times one plus cosine x over one plus cosine x. And again, if you look at the bottom part, if we have one minus cosine times one plus cosine, right? And this is again, uh, you, we, we, we have used this formula in the previous page, right? This, we have, you need to use the difference of squares formula. So the bottom part is actually equal to, oh, it is a sine squared x, sorry. Sine squared x times one plus cosine x divided by a squared, which is one squared, right? One minus cosine squared x. Okay. Nice. And one minus cosine squared is equal to, again, the most famous, the most useful trig identity, right? Sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to one. That's why one minus cosine squared is equal to sine squared. So let me write that down. Sine squared x one plus cosine x divided by sine squared x and as expected we can cancel out right we can simplify sine squared x on the top and bottom and we are only left with one plus cosine x right yay this is the exactly right side of the equal sign right cool so left hand side is equal to right hand side again we verified the identity all right deal okay let's look at this example secant x plus tangent x again uh, we have secant minus tangent right so what we can do here is uh, we can multiply on the right hand side this time. I'm gonna work on the right hand side this time. We can multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the second minus 10, okay? And second minus 10, conjugate of second minus 10 is second plus 10, right? So one over second minus 10 times Let's multiply top and bottom by the conjugate, 10 second plus 10 over second plus tangent x, okay? And what do we get? On the top, we have one times second x, second times tangent, right? So on the top, we have only second x plus 10 x. And on the bottom, again, as you see, we are, gonna, we are using that difference of squares formula a, a lot. A minus B times A plus B is equal to A squared minus B squared, right? So the bottom part will be then secant squared X minus tangent squared X. We can consider A as secant, right? A minus B, A plus B is equal to A squared minus B squared, okay? Now, uh, secant squared minus tangent squared, Again, we remember this, right? One of the trig identity, uh, Pythagorean trig identity. What was the identity? Uh, tangent squared plus one is equal to secant squared, right? And if you move, maybe I can write that identity here. So that identity is tangent squared x plus one is equal to secant squared x, right? Now I can, if I move this down to the right hand side, 
we get one is equal to secant x squared minus tangent x squared. So the bottom part here is actually equal to one. Secant x plus tangent x over one. And of course that's equal to secant x minus tangent x. Again, sorry, plus tangent x. And remember this time we started from the right hand side. So the, the one we found should be same with the left hand side, which is the case, right? This is exactly equal to that, this left hand side, which means right is equal to left, left is equal to right. So we verified the identity, okay? I hope it is clear. If not, let me know. All right, let's go to the next example. Tangent x minus cotangent x, tangent x plus cotangent x, equals two sine squared x minus one. Hmm, okay. So should I use a conjugate here? If you want to make sure, let's go back to our previous page. Okay, these are commonly used conjugates, right? And tangent minus cotangent is not one of them. So I think using the conjugate is not a good idea, okay? So what, what else we can do here then? Hmm. Remember, if nothing pops up in your mind, what you can do is you can rewrite everything in terms of sine and cosine, okay? And try to show them. And let's start from left-hand side again. And we can rewrite sine and cosine, co sorry, tangent and cotangent with respect to sine and cosine. All right, let's do it. So, Make, let me make it bigger. So tangent is sine over cosine, right? Sine x over cosine x minus. Cotangent is cosine over sine. Cosine x minus over sine x, sorry. Divided by tangent x is again sine over cosine. Sine x over cosine x plus and cotangent, cos, cotangent is cosine over sine, right? cosine over sine. All right. And now we have some fractions, right? On top and bottom. And to do the fractions, of course, we need for the subtraction and addition, addition we need to have the common denominator, right? So let's multiply this with sine. Maybe I can change color so I can use some fancy techniques, right? So maybe I can use, oh, I couldn't change that. I want this color. Okay, I did that. So let's multiply here, cosine over cosine. Sorry, to get the common denominator, we have to multiply sine over sine, right? Sine over sine. And here, uh, cosine over cosine. Similarly, I need to multiply to get the common denominator. I need to multiply with sine over sine. And here sine over sine, again. Uh, sorry, uh, not sine over sine. I need to multiply with cosine over cosine, right? To make it common denominator. So now what we have, again, let's turn to the Blue color, so on the left, on the top, we have, okay, what do we have? Sine times sine, sine squared x. And now they have the common denominator, so I can uh, write them together. And on the, on the right hand side, the top term is cosine squared x, right? Cosine squared x divided by sine x, cosine x, okay? And what do we have on the bottom? So again, on the left, we have sine times sine, right? So sine squared x. And on the right, we have cosine times cosine. So cosine squared x over sine x cosine x. First of all, uh, we can cross out these, right? Since they are the same term, we can simplify them. And sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to what? one, right? The most famous trig identity. So this is equal to one. So we're only left with sine squared minus 
cosine squared. Sen squared minus sen squared x minus cosine squared x. Is it equal to the right hand side? Not yet. Not yet. So what else we can do here? On the right hand side we have only sine squared, right? And on the left hand side we have sine and cosine together. So let's rewrite cosine squared with respect to sine squared. And how can I do that? Again, I'm gonna use the most well known trick identity, right? So cosine squared x is equal to one minus sine squared x, right? Because cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to one. So I'm gonna use this guy here. I have I hope I have enough space. Yes, I do. So this is equal to sine squared x minus one minus sine squared x. Oop. And I can of course let me continue here. I can distribute this minus inside the parentheses. Sine squared x minus one plus sine squared x. So I have now two sine squared right? sine squared plus sine squared. So it is two sine squared x minus one. And this guy is equal to right hand side of the equal sign, right? So we verified that left hand side is equal to right hand side. All right. I hope it is clear for all of you guys. Let's move to the next and last example in this section. And again, um, there is nothing clear in this problem. So what we can do again, write everything with respect to sine and cosine, okay? So tangent is uh, sine over cosine, sine over cosine times cosecant is one over sine, right? One over sine x minus sine x. Okay. So first of all, we have a fraction here, right? So we have to have the common denominator and normally there's over one here, right? To make the common denominator, I have to multiply here, both sides with sine and sine, and sine right? Sine over sine. So it will be equal to sine x over cosine x times one minus. And if I multiply both sides with sine, it will be one minus sine squared x, right? Over sine x. Okay, deal. And first of all, I can simplify those two sine x, right? And one minus sine squared x is equal to uh, cosine squared, right? Cosine squared x over cosine x. And if I can simplify this cosine with one of the cosine on the top, so we are only left with cosine x, which is exactly equal to the right hand side of the equal sign. Okay, so in this section, you just need to verify some identities, some equations, and this is how you do it, okay? There are some tricks you can apply, or if nothing pops up in your mind, you can just rewrite everything with respect to sine and cosine, and after some algebraic operations, you can get the uh, identity, all right? I hope it's going great, it's clear for everyone. So this is the end of this section. Uh, in the next video, we are gonna start section 7.2. All right, guys. Okay, take care, stay safe. I will see you in the next video. I, I cannot see you, but <laughs> you will see me in the next video, I, maybe I should say. All right. Okay, let me stop recording.